Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson was taken out of yesterday's game against the Bills with a concussion. Let's talk about this injury in more detail. So he sustained this injury after trying to save an awful snap kind of back in his end zone. And when we look over the footage, you'll see that he actually sustained a whiplash type hit to the head. For those who don't know me, my name is Sona, and I'm a resident doctor specializing in sports and exercise medicine. On this channel, we review injuries step by step, discuss the anatomy, and then discuss return to play implications. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date. For now, let's get back to talking about Lamar Jackson's concussion. So the issue doesn't become the tackle up here. I mean, the tackle for the most part looks pretty clean. He's not getting, he's not grabbing jersey. He's not grabbing mask, but it's this one here, number 49. So he's grabbing the legs and he ends up behind the legs. And if you look at how he ends up behind the legs, this is going to create a fulcrum point for when he gets tackled here to whiplash downwards. And we're going to see that continue. So he's going to tackle over or he's now falling over completely tilting his body, compromising his head and neck. And what you see here, because he grabbed his feet there, so unfortunately that's a, that's a bit more of a dirty play, to be honest. Watch how this head has that velocity to impact the ground. And that's a pretty big whiplash injury. And let's see if he actually has a second hit. No, so he's able to protect his head afterwards, which is a good sign. Good things that I wanted to point out here is while Lamar Jackson did take a little bit of time to get up off the field, take a look here. He is running off the field here. So that, that's a good sign. He's got at least the coordination and balance to do so. Now, many of you may be thinking, what is a concussion assessment and how do we go about doing them? So normally what we're looking at is there are a few different types of assessment tools and you can look these up online. One is called the SCAT-5. There's a few others as well. And essentially how we administer them is if we can get our athletes off to the sidelines safely. So if they're able to get up, they're not complaining of any of any significant kind of neck pain. And I'm not worried about any, any neck fractures per se. We get them off to the sideline. We do these tests and these tests look at memory, cognitive function, balance, delayed recall. So there's multiple different facets that we check and they can be quite extensive. They'll take a good five to 10 minutes to, to really to really do. And if we're worried that anyone had a concussion, we pull them out of the game. And that's exactly what happened with Lamar Jackson. So the first thing we think about, especially when we see an athlete on the field with a hit like that is we need to ask ourselves, is this hit dangerous enough that we need to take them to the hospital and scan their brain? Now in Lamar Jackson's case, it doesn't seem like he had to go to hospital because they were able to diagnose a concussion and rule out a bad brain injury in the actual locker room. And I'll show you how we can do that. So one of the scoring systems that we use is called the Canadian CT head rule. I'm Canadian, so this is the one we use. There's the Nexus head rule, I believe, down in the States. Both are actually very good scoring systems and can help you rule out a bad head injury. And because I haven't had the opportunity to examine him myself, I'm going off of the assumption that likely there was no red flags on exam that needed him to be put in a C-spine collar and get head imaging. And this is very common. We can actually rule out a lot of bad head injuries on the field and diagnose our suspicions of a concussion, which saves people extra imaging. Now, the other thing I'd be worried about in Lamar Jackson's case is actually whiplash. It may not present right away, but the way his neck essentially tilted back and hit the ground, I'm gonna to wanna to make sure later on down, down the line, the next day or so, to really evaluate him for signs and symptoms of whiplash. If you look at the, the head here, so if we look at this side, this here is your trapezius and this is your platysma, a nice little muscle. But if we dig into the actual underneath into the deep neck flexors and extensors, you can see there's quite a lot of different musculature around the area. And in an injury such as a whiplash injury, these muscles can become seized up and cause a lot of additional headache and neck issues. And, as, and unfortunately, Jackson's a quarterback, so he's gonna need to rotate his neck pain-free without issues to be able to play his his top game. Now many of you have heard the term concussion thrown around and we know that it's something that really can take athletes out for an undetermined amount of time. What is a concussion? A concussion is essentially a mild traumatic brain injury. So it's a brain injury sustained when either you have head impact or you actually have a big whiplash. So think about your skull and the brain is inside floating in a, in a surrounding fluid. So if you have a strong whiplash mechanism and say you didn't even hit your head, you could actually still jiggle that brain inside the skull. In his 
case, he had that whiplash mechanism, but he also hit his head. So we had two potential mechanisms to really jiggle that brain within the skull. Now the key to a concussion is that it does not show up on imaging. So on CT scan and MRI, it is negative, but people have symptoms. So we think it's more at the molecular level that's causing these symptoms. I'll link a paper down below, but essentially people think when someone has a concussion, there's changes in blood brain flow, the blood brain barrier, glucose, glutamate, GABA, all these different neurotransmitters, which are essentially causing you to feel all these weird symptoms. What are the main symptoms of concussion? So I really classify them into four main symptoms. You got physical symptoms, which include kind of dizziness, headache, um, neck pain, things like that. You have cognitive symptoms, which include dulling, feeling slowed, feeling like you're not, you're not at your wit's end, for example. You're not sharp. Then you have behavioral and emotional symptoms. So a lot of people will feel angry, irritable, depressed, anxious, and the list really goes on. And the last is sleep disturbances. So a ton of people will have troubles either falling asleep, staying asleep, getting up early, not feeling rested. And what's so dangerous about a concussion is that if we return someone back before they're, they're, they're better, we can have a risk of something called a double hit syndrome or a second hit syndrome. There have been multiple case reports where athletes have gone back too early, sustained a second concussion, and it was just too much for the brain to handle. There was excess brain swelling and they actually died from the second one. This is why we take it so seriously. And this is why as sports med doctors and athletic trainers on the field, we will pull athletes if we're concerned about a concussion. Now, many of you may be wondering, so when will Jackson be back? And the answer is quite simply, it depends. Most concussions will get better in seven to 21 days. Now, in, in Jackson's case, whether or not he had previous concussions before in the past may predispose him at a longer return to play. The key is he needs to be symptom free. And then once he is symptom free, he needs to progress his training slowly. So once my athletes are symptom free, I get them to do steady state cardio. Then I get them to increase the intensity of the cardio the next day. Then I get them to add some weights in, for example. And then we start doing on the field practice but no contact. And the last step is really contact-based practice to get him back in the game. So he's gonna to need to be symptom free. He's gonna to need to come back on a good return to play protocol. And only time will tell when Jackson will be well enough to come back and play. And I'm pretty sure the news reports will let us know. So we'll have to stay tuned to see when he will be cleared to get back on the field. If you like this video, please click on the like button. And if you wanna stay up to date on videos where I break down injuries that athletes face so that an average fan can better understand them, please subscribe to my channel. For now, that's all.